Let's give a round of applause. Everyone, that was Star Fields. She happens to be a member of the Family Cafe Board of Directors. And I don't know how we're going to top that. So she has set the bar high. So thank you, Star. Everyone, please be seated. Thank you again. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 23rd Annual Family Cafe. 23rd Annual. Just tell me if you've been here 23 years. Besides me, who else has been here 23 years? Raise your hand, folks. Raise your hand if it's your first year. A lot of newcomers. A lot of newcomers. Well, we're here to celebrate each and every one of you for being here and to allow our elected officials and our state agency heads to address the crowd, talk with you, share their concerns as we've been sharing ours, and we're all going to learn from each other. There's a couple of quick things I want to tell you. Uh, one quick announcement, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say it. June 1st is the start of hurricane season. We talk about that very uh, deliberately every year. So if you look in your program, you'll see, get a plan, please get a plan. We live in Florida, we're surrounded by water. Okay. Before we get started at this time, I would like to introduce you to, again, to the Family Cafe staff and our board of directors. If you all would please stand and the Florida Youth Council. Family Cafe staff, I'm just gonna say out your name, is Jeremy Countryman, our program director. Joe McCann, <laughs> policy manager. Sarah Fahey, our financial administrator. Nikki Germain, our youth counselor. Youth advisor, Jesse Hansen, regional demonstration coordinator, and our um, volunteer always in our back pocket, Tanya Hansen, who has been helping us for years. We're all wearing chef coats, red, so you'll recognize this. I'd also like to take the opportunity to introduce to you um, the Florida Youth Council. There's plenty of them, so they're just going to wave their hands over there. There are youth leaders throughout the state of Florida in between the ages of 15 and 30. And last but not least, our board of directors, our board chair, Jim DeBogren, Starfields, who you heard today. Excuse me. Jeannie Forthruber, Eddie Hall, Yolanda Herrera, Luann Long, Anna Marie Rodriguez, Sharon Rousey, Angelita Salato, Catherine Smith, Tim Turner, and Gil Williams. Without these remarkable people, we would not be able to put on this event. As you can see, our staff is small, our board is large, our hearts are full, and we're totally dedicated to assist and help. At this time, before we get in and uh, moving a little further, I would like um, to introduce you to you one of our board members, Anna Maria Rodriguez, and she's going to help me here kick off the evening. Senator. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It is my honor and privilege to be here with all of you during this conference. My name is Anna Maria Rodriguez. I am a board member of the Family Cafe, but I also serve as a state senator in District 39, which includes uh, western portions of Miami-Dade County and all of Monroe County, which is in the Florida Keys. I will now introduce my distinguished colleagues that are here to uh, say a few words, and I'll go ahead and start off with giving a warm welcome to State Representative Randy Fine.
Well, thank you all. They, they apparently have the guy who puts the money in his budget speak first. So, uh, so, so, so my name is Randy Fine. I am a state representative, and I am the chairman of the Appropriations Committee in the Florida House that looks at K-12 through education and which funds the Family Cafe. And while, while I appreciate the thanks, um, they are not deserved. Because we live in a world where people disagree about just about everything that the government does. But the one thing no one should disagree with is that helping folks like you is what the government ought to be doing every day. So I'm pleased to be here. I'm pleased to be here with my colleagues. I'm pleased to be here with my friend, the governor, who will be here shortly. And I promise you this, next year we'll get it done again. So thanks for having me. Thank you. All right, next we're going to invite my other friend and colleague, Representative Daisy Morales. Please come up and give her a warm round of applause. excited to be here. You know, I need to share something with you. I dealt with uh, a family of mine dear, so dear to me, my sister, and in, in, in her memory, I'm always here to serve you people, okay? So you have to understand that I have a purpose too. Um, I lost my sister three years ago, but you know what? I learned a lot from her, and that's why I'm here, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Next, I'll invite up my other friend uh, and colleague, Representative Michelle Salzman. Welcome. Good evening. I I didn't know I was going to speak when I signed up to attend this conference, but <laughs> how fun is that? I'll, I'll just leave you with this. Um, I'm a combat wounded veteran. I'm, I'm disabled. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> I say that to tell you, um, I, I, if you look at me, <laughs> I don't look very disabled. And in 2008, when I was serving at the Naval Education and Training Command Center, um, the disability folks came to me, the DAV, um, and they said, uh, Ms. Ms. Salzman, w would you mind teaching other folks w w what it means to be disabled? And, and I was, I was kind of thrown aback. I said, what, what do you mean? What do you teach them. Well, do people know you're disabled? No. Should they? You know? Uh, <laughs> and I said, well, it's a stigma. People don't understand what it means to be disabled, and it'd be nice if someone like you that looks like you but has a, I have severe disabilities could speak to others and educate them on how to treat folks and how to address folks. And so I'll tell you that that was 2008. That was a long time ago. And while I think that we've come a long way in how we approach the stigma of the disabled, I certainly understand that we have a much longer way to go, and I am so proud and honored to be here, and I will continue to fight for that and fight for you all as well as myself and others, and I appreciate you all for being here. Thank you. Next, we'll invite our friend, State Representative Scott Plakin, up to the stage. Welcome. Thank you, Senator. And I stand here tonight as a father of six, one with special needs. So I have a little bit of an inkling of uh, the lives that you live and the challenges that you have right in our family. Uh, he's 32 years old now. His name's Jameson. But I'd like to say something to the caregivers here tonight. 
I was married for 33 years to Susie, and she's, uh, I used to come to this every year, but for several years I couldn't come. I haven't been several years. She died from Alzheimer's in 2018. For the last few years of her life, I had to take care of all of her physical needs. But you know, it was just for a few years. And I know, and I've seen some of the people I've recognized here for more than a decade, I started, I started coming here, that it's not just a few years. It's a lifetime commitment to the one that you love. And there is no greater love, as we know, than to lay, lay down your life for another. So I, you know, it was nothing I ever signed up for, just like many of you in this room, but I got an inkling of the daily lives and the sacrifices that you make. And I think there's a special place in God's heart for all of you. So thank you for being here. I thank you for being here and so wonderful to be here. All right, and last but not least, we have our Family Cafe champion for so many years, our former Senate President, Bill Galvano. Please come up. Hello, my friends. How are you? It's, it's so great to be here, and it's wonderful to see such a sizable crowd. And the fact is, this is a hybrid event. And look at the crowd that we have here today. Yes, so give yourselves a round of applause. Let me t start by saying, I missed you. I truly did. It was a hard year for all of us, and I've missed my colleagues and, and so many, but we've made it through. You all have made it through, and we're back again uh, to collaborate, to share ideas, to work with one another, to learn with one another, and to progress forward with one another. And it's great to once again be here and be a part of this wonderful, wonderful program. I want to thank my colleagues who have, uh, in very, very meaningful stories that you all shared, and it makes me so happy to see you here, true leaders in the Florida legislature who are here tonight to reassure you that you have advocates in government, and I know they mean what they say when they say they're going to continue to advocate for you, not just for this event, but for all causes for persons with unique abilities. Thank you. And of course, my friend Lori, who's already doing something on the side there. She's always ahead of us. It's wonderful to see you. I, you know, this is my 18th, 18th family cafe. When I first joined this event, I had a little more hair. I was a little thinner. But I think I'm wiser now. I'm wiser because I learned from so many of the people in this room and so many of the advocates and so many of the people who represent and serve the Family Cafe. And I'm a better person for it. I've learned from the people in government that have come to these events year after year to share their ideas and work with you and learn from you. I've learned from the folks that are in the agencies, people who are here today, great, hardworking folks that are part of our Florida family that are here because they want to make your quality of life and the quality of life of your families better. So again, it's, it's a privilege to be with them as well. And I'm looking forward to seeing my good friend, Governor Ron DeSantis. He, is he in the back here already or hiding out? So you have to be grateful to, to uh, our governor as well for his leadership through a very difficult year and the fact that we are here again and the fact that we have funding. So, so I've told you many times that uh, I will always be an advocate uh, for all of you and for the Family Cafe. So I'm not going anywhere. I truly am not. And I'll tell you this, in, in almost two decades of service in the Florida legislature and in government, the most meaningful experience that I have annually is to be with you, my friends. God bless you all.
Thank you all once again for being here. Uh, before I uh, conclude and pass it to Lori, I just want to say that it's really been an honor, again, to serve on this board and also in the State Senate. Uh, as a freshman senator, I really didn't know what to expect my first year, uh, but the Family Cafe approached me about sponsoring their appropriations request. Uh, the Family Cafe does receive a considerable amount of money from the state of Florida. Yes, we do. We do. And uh, funny enough, when the legislative session started, we really didn't know what to expect in terms of funding. Um, everyone said it was going to be a bleak year because of the pandemic, that our state was in a, you know, over $3 billion hole, uh, and not to expect any funding for any of these programs. Uh, but thankfully, um, with uh, my support and the House sponsor and the governor's support as well, we were able to get uh, full funding for Family Cafe. So, yes. Thank you all. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Lori. And just some good news, the governor's about to get here. So stay tuned. He'll be right here in just a few minutes. I'm back. OK, so we're, as we're waiting for the governor, I'm going to ask everyone up here to remain on stage. And as everyone here has spoken, um, and for everyone that's at home, I am blown away by the numbers of the people sitting in this room. Um, it just brings joy to my heart, and I hope everyone takes full advantage of what we have offered today and what we'll have tomorrow and on Sunday. All our events are happening, as we know, in this one area, and then the two areas on to the side. Everything here is being pushed immediately out to Facebook Live. Others are being taped and they will be on our website just like last year. We can go and view hundreds of presentations that we couldn't do face to face. So I just want to thank you all for it. And for everybody up here, I hope that you um, really look at the dedication that everybody came out with. Back in January, when we sat down and discussed it, we didn't know what it would look like. So while they're up here again, let me ask a couple more questions. If this is your first year, if you are able, please stand up. This is your first year. That's a lot of new people that just... Um, so I'm going to ask you all now to sit down. Now, if you've been here 23 years, do I have anybody who's been there as long as I, well, okay, there we go. There we go. My own daughter stands up. There you go. And now since um, Senator Galvano, ex-president of the Senate Galvano, since he's, and I don't know how to say, he gets too much around him, too many titles there. Here we go. I don't know if we're going to start hyphenating you when you become governor or, you know, how is this going to work? So, if you've been here 18 years, stand up. Aha! So you've got a lot of followers too, sir. All right, and we're really pleased and proud that we have some state agency leadership here with us tonight. All right, it says I've got a minute and a half. <laughs> come help me, come help me. I don't want to take it much further, um, sir, because we've got a lot, oops, I don't, you know, oh, those are just my notes to talk about hurricanes and stuff. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is when we ad lib. That's right. I can tap so, dance. Would you like to see it? No. So we're going to go from 2 to 18 and then from 19 to 23. <laughs> no. Well, again, I think Lori deserves a big round of applause. <laughs> you just don't so, want to see me tap dance. No. no I, I can tell jokes. Uh, I'll tell you, 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 you see Lori and her team here, and as of folks that are involved in Family Cafe, you may see them at meetings. But my 
colleagues and I have seen them at work in the halls of the Capitol. And that's where the rubber really meets the road. That's right. Going from office to office, making sure that they are sharing your dreams, your goals, your desires, and the importance of having folks like are behind me step up to fund what is necessary to make sure that you have a path forward and that your quality of life is there and that you have the opportunity to, as I said earlier, collaborate together, share ideas, and learn from one another. And so when I say give her a round of applause, that's not gratuitous. That's because I've seen her working really, really hard as well as the rest of the team. Absolutely. Speaking of the rest of the team, I'd like them to get up here so later when the governor comes here, we'll be all prepared for pictures. So if you all could come up in this area, um, Family Cafe staff, the Family Cafe Board of Directors, and the Florida Youth Council. I've introduced them to you, to you all day long, um, so when they come in for pictures, okay, he's late, all right? There's only so much a girl can do when he's late. Remember, don't be late, okay? All right, so here they all are coming up. And as you notice, one thing about their attire, we're all wearing red chef coats. Our last member here is our photographer. So we're all now blocking everybody. So we're going to sort of come around so we don't have to block anyone. We're in a group on both sides. So the Youth Council, if you all can group on that side so we're not standing in front of everybody. If the board, if you all can come down and group on this side, yeah. So the Youth Council, except for Nikki, Keep them down there. They have the Youth Council t-shirts on. The staff and the board members, we all wear chef coats. We're in your ambassadors. We're your ambassadors this weekend. And we're playing the game, how many people can we fit on stage without it collapsing? Okay, great. That. Okay. Okay. Well, how about a round of applause for all of you? How about a round of applause for everybody up here? Why don't you just, why don't you do this? Why don't you just take a couple minutes? Just tell them this. Stand and see. We'll take a couple minutes and wait for the governor to get here. What? Stay in their seats. I can't do the dead air or Facebook or Microsoft, so we have to keep rambling and rambling. So. And so where, where, where do the agency heads we have here? Agency heads that we have here, Department of Education, Chancellor Oliva. If you could stand up, because I certainly can't see you, sir. Okay, great. Florida Department of Health. I will touch that if I go to the policy. So I. I guess I'll do some impromptu uh, ad-libbing with the team as well. But can you tap dance? No, and you definitely don't want me to sing because I will. This thing will be over really quick. <laughs> well, good good evening, everybody. My name is Jacob Oliva. I work with the Department of Education. So thank you all for being here. So. As we were doing recognitions, I was thinking of a, a couple things when we we're talking about new families that were here and new opportunities to learn together. So we're here as a Department of Education and we're doing some workshops to help families learn a little bit more about how they can get the layers of support they need in our schools. But also our team is here to learn from our families about what's working and what's not working. But I am very curious. In this crowd, did anybody graduate from high school this year as part of the class of 2021? So I'll please stand. I want to say congratulations for that great work. Wow, look at all these graduates. Yay. I, I could tell you firsthand, 
that is not an easy feat in spite of all the challenges that we've had over the past couple of years. So we're really proud of you. Countless of days, countless, countless hours and months working hard to find out how we can make learning better. But one thing that we didn't recognize that Florida continues to lead the way, and it's our legislative folks and our great governor who's going to come join us, is in choice opportunities for our families. How many people are in this room are a recipient of one of our, our family empowerment scholarships here in the state of Florida? If you could stand up, we should recognize our folks that are taking part in these opportunities because that vision in giving choice opportunities to our parents who know their children the best is something that Florida stands very proud of and continues to lead the way. And it's our legislature that helps support and make that happen. And they deserve a lot of recognition for that. So I'm going to turn it back over to my good friend, uh, Senator Galvano. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And again, one more round of applause for all of our Family Cafe folks. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's now my absolute honor and privilege to introduce you to someone who needs no introduction, not just here in the state of Florida, but throughout the United States of America. I'm talking, I'm talking about our governor, a governor who has made the state of Florida, through his leadership, the place that everyone wants to be. A governor, through his leadership, who has made the state of Florida a place that every other state wants to be like. A governor who cares about all of us, who cares about you, and he shows that by having a record of fulfilled promises. I'm talking about our governor who makes decisions based on fact and fairness. A governor who is bold. And if I had to sum up what Governor DeSantis is about, it's one word, freedom. Freedom for me, freedom for you, freedom for everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, the governor of the state of Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis. words from Governor DeSantis, we have some very special opportunities that I'd like all of you to share with us, and we've been waiting for him to share it too. The first is every year, y'all can sit down unless you really want to stand. There you go. You brought them to their feet, sir. Okay. Um, we're going to ensure that we're giving out a few awards, and every year, as you can see over here, we give out what we call is our Silver Spoon Award. And that's for our Volunteer of the Year, who has assisted us throughout the year in various ways. Some of us um, help us with this, and some of us help us with that. But they stand out, and it's our special way of saying thank you to them. This year, we'd like to have the honor 
to someone who she does not know she's getting this honor because I told her she's up here to give away something. So, Kara Blonder, if you and Mark would come up. What Kara does is she um, has assisted this past year has said to me almost every day, if not in a text, but an email, we need to all come back. We've had enough of COVID. We need to come back. She has come to the hotel and has given me updates on everything this hotel has done and is willing to do for, to try to ensure not only our health and safety, which have done an excellent job, but she's in constant communication with the Orange County uh, officials and saying no mask or mask or we're all coming. So she said, Lori, if you do it, they'll come. They did. Thank you, Kara. Thank you, Mark. Did you get pictures? We, we got them. Okay, you hold on. Again? Let's do again. Real quick. Thank you, Kara, and her son, Mark. This next award, I need my friend, um, Senator Galvano, to come back up. I'm right here. So for 18 years, we've been saying, I think we've said at least 10 or 12 times here um, this evening. But um, through his leadership, one of the ways that we wanted to honor him, not by just bringing in a great big crowd that he helped establish through his um, continued advocacy for this population, which is totally amazing. If you ever needed him, you call him, his staff, everybody would answer. His leadership for individuals with disabilities and their family members is tremendous. We appreciate it. So this year, we have created the Family Cafe Bill Galvano Leadership Award. That's very nice. First year, and would you like to present it to our first year recipient? I would be happy to. First of all, thank you. This is a tremendous honor. It truly is. And, and as I told you, it's been nothing but a pleasure for me to be here, and I look forward to being here next year. But the inaugural recipient of the Bill Galvano Family Cafe Leadership Award is someone you've already heard from this evening, uh, someone who I know personally has been a tremendous advocate for persons with unique abilities, and in particular, the Family Cafe, someone who has empathy, someone who has committed to continue to be an advocate, and someone that makes me happy that he is in the Florida legislature and uh, soon will be replaced by his lovely wife, who will continue the advocacy. But for right now, I would like to award this inaugural Family Cafe Leadership Award to Representative Scott Plakin. Well, th thank you. And Senator Galvano, thank you for making me aware of this organization in 2009 when we started coming here over the years. And, and I also want to thank uh, Governor DeSantis.
So as I was saying, uh, you know, this is the fourth year I've been able to, uh, working with my colleagues to obtain the appropriation for this, three under our great Governor DeSantis. And I, I especially want to thank Governor DeSantis. Last year, I know, it was very, very difficult with over a, a global pandemic just beginning and making over a billion dollars in veto cut, cut, vetoes with a lot of very important programs. But of course, this one got funded even in the most difficult of budgetary environments. And this award, I just found out tonight, it was the inaugural because I haven't been here for a few years because of uh, my caregiving. Uh, and it makes it especially an honor. And you know, and don't please, please don't tell any. You know, we get Legislator of the Year of various awards, but I will tell you, and don't tell any of the other groups. But this is the most meaningful award I've got, gotten in my 11 years of service. And I accept this award and dedicate it to the caregivers here tonight. Thank you so much, Representative. Now we have one more award. And I'm hoping that um, you all will enjoy seeing this award as much as we will enjoy giving it. This award, Governor, you want to come up and help me? Sure. You want to see? Sure. Okay. Oh, nice. That's yeah. awesome. You want to help? I will help. <laughs> you want to announce it? I sure am. This final award is our, um, I guess you would call it the championship belt. <laughs> President Bill Galvano. It's for you. It's your all-time uh, championship belt. It's for me. Yeah. It's for you. <laughs> These oh are all-time champion. That's right. Now, Jill, if he goes home and wears this, please allow him at least 24 hours. Okay? He's our heavyweight champion. That's fantastic. Now, he didn't know. He just thought he was coming up here to help deliver. Thank you so much. I was not expecting that again. Thank you all. Love you all so much. So let's give one last round of applause for all the award winners and then one great big hoop hoop. Stand up and applaud and welcome our governor, Ron DeSantis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It's great to be here with y'all. Thank you so much. It's great to be here at Family Cafe. Uh, it's great to be here in Orlando. We got a, I see a lot of great legislators here, um, and I want to thank everybody. Uh, I want to also just, just recognize our, our first lady who couldn't be with, here, uh, with us here tonight, but she sends her regards, and she's doing a lot of great things for the people of Florida. Um, you know, we have uh, a four-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old running around the governor's mansion, and so it's a lot to do. Sometimes people will ask me, Governor, what have you learned since being governor? And I think that they think I'm going to say something like, well, when a hurricane comes or this or that, and obviously you do learn a lot there, but the first thing I think about and my wife thinks about with the three little ones running around is what we've learned is you can remove finger paint off the wallpaper in the state dining room in the governor's mansion. We figured that out, and it's good. I'm glad to be here because all Floridians deserve the opportunity to reach their full potential. And I'd like to recognize 
three people here who receive services from APD and are taking uh, major strides in their life. First, I'd like to recognize Jesse Williams. Jesse, are you here? Not here? Well, oh, good. Jesse, great. More than a decade ago, Jesse came to the Wings of, Love, uh, Wings of Love group home after being homeless. Working with this care team, he learned how to cook meals and over time gain independence in his daily life. After a couple years, Jesse was ready to move into his own apartment. And with the skills he acquired in vocational rehabilitation and supported employment, he was offered a job at Winn-Dixie Supermarket, and he's been working at Winn-Dixie for 10 years now. His supported living coach helped him use his savings to purchase his own home. And because of his long-term employment, Jesse's able to maintain his home, enjoy his community, and invite his elderly neighbors to join him on his porch for visit. He's committed to gaining his independence and has done so through hard work. So I congratulate Jesse, and will you all join me in congratulating Jesse? And I just happen to have a couple of these. These are um, State of Florida, 46 governor autograph hats. And so I'm going to give one of them to Jesse. So if we can. Congratulations. I also would like to highlight Serena Terrell. Serena, are you? There you are. She's an APD customer who began to thrive after the staff at Wings of Love helped her move into an apartment. She's an active member of her church. She participates in the annual women's retreat and volunteers to help others. She was recently awarded an esteemed usher position at the church. She's already working on her next big goal, to purchase her own home. With, with help from her waiver care team, she's putting aside a portion of her rent for a down payment on her future home. And I want everyone to join me in recognizing Serena for her achievement. Also, want to recognize Patty's personal support staff, uh, Kim Green, Serena, Jesse, and Patty. Oh, excuse me. I am so sorry. I mess up. Finally, we have to recognize Patty. So, Patty Bradley, where are you at? Oh, there you are. Great. She's an APD member who lives in her own condo in Altamont Springs and receives supported living coaching services and personal support services. She's been working at Publix for 11 years. She's a warm and friendly person. She loves to work. The management and customers enjoy Patty's pleasant personality, and her free time, she enjoys shopping at the mall and walking around Crane's Roost Park. Please join me in recognizing Patty. And now let me recognize Patty's personal support, Kim Green. Thank you, Kim, very much. Thank you. I want to thank all three, Serena, Jesse, Patty. I congratulate you for your hard work. Uh, you're realizing your dreams. You're making contributions to our great state. Um, and you're making an awful lot of us proud. I also want to thank businesses like Publix and Winn-Dixie uh, for hiring these great Floridians. And showing everybody and other businesses as well, you know, our folks with unique abilities are some of the most hardworking, loyal, and caring people we have in our state. And they are a great credit to these organizations and they do a great job up and down this state, and they are huge parts 
of Florida's many diverse communities. And we obviously in the state uh, want to continue to support uh, all that we can. And we did in the most recent budget, we were able to have a lot of different investments, $95 million to offer home and community-based services Medicaid waiver to individuals in crisis and those with critical needs. This takes almost 2,000 people off the APD waiver waiting list and brings them into service services. We also did $20 million for necessary repairs and maintenance for the Sunland Center in Mariana to ensure the health and safety of residents and staff. Did a million dollars for employment and internships for individuals on the waiting list, and two million for renovations and repairs uh, to Billy Joe Rich Park in Gulf County, which was impacted by Hurricane Michael. So we look forward to working with APD and the 15 family care councils across the state and continuing the agency's mission to support individuals uh, with disabilities in living, learning, and working in their communities. Um, and I look forward to continue working with the private sector to make sure that we are giving these Floridians opportunities to make the most uh, of their great and unique abilities. So I want to thank Lori and her team for working very hard to putting on this amazing event. Uh, and for all of our Floridians out there for un with unique abilities, uh, please know you have a governor that appreciates your contributions to this state of Florida. Thank you. God bless everybody. And we will see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We want to thank we want to thank everybody for being on the stage. I see a lot of you are running over there for um, to try to take pictures and everything. But let me tell you, the um, our program continues. As he exits the stage, oh, he's not, okay. At this point, I would like the state agency representatives to come up to the stage so you'll have an opportunity to address the audience. State agency leadership. If you could please come to the stage. I'm going to get you all up here and get them all down, and then we're going to keep it going because we're running live. So this is a live event, so there's a lot of people at home who don't know what is going on right now. So I want you all to please um, share some time with us. We're doing a switch over. We've invited the state agency representatives to come up to the stage from the Department of Ed. Okay. Okay. And while we're in transition, Vocational rehabilitation. We're, yep, I need you to. Okay, we need you to sit down. Department of Health, Agency for Persons with Disabilities, and Able United will all have a, an opportunity to come to the podium and share some remarks. After each agency leader shares remarks, 
They'll just go back to their seats. If we all could please be seated. Thank you so much, and we'll continue our program. No, we're not doing that today. At this time, now that you all are getting seated and sort of quieting down a little bit, we have invited each of the state agency leadership to join us up on the stage. where they're going to tell you a little bit about their agency, the highlights, changes that you may see coming in the future, things that they want you to know that they've been doing in the past. And then afterwards, they're going to sit back down. But when they're all through, they're going to be available for any photo taking, um, questions, answers, etc. So well, let's get this started. I'm going to now introduce the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation. <laughs> Hi, good evening. I'm Allison Flanagan. I'm the Director of the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation, which is with, within the Florida Department of Education. And it's so good to be here. How is everybody doing this evening? Yay. I have to say, I'm particularly excited. This is my first work trip in 15 months that's in person. So I was very excited to get here, and I had to kind of teach myself again how to travel, but very glad to be here. I had a session earlier uh, that explained a lot about uh, vocational rehabilita rehabilitation services, but for those who need to know a little bit, uh, we are the employment agency in Florida. We work with individuals with disabilities age 14 and up who want to pursue employment. Whether you have a job or you need to maintain or you need to get a job or you want to maintain the job you have or maybe you want to advance in your career, that's a reason to come to VR because we're here to help you obtain those vocational goals regardless of what that is. Uh, we have a website, rehabworks.org. Rehabworks org and you can find all the information there as including how to reach out to those local offices we have offices all across the state and VR counselors ready to assist you into your employment goals and it is a pleasure to be here tonight I hope you all have an awesome uh, two days left of the conference and don't forget employment matters um, it's so much more than a paycheck and everyone, regardless of who you are, deserves to be employed and deserves to have something they enjoy to do in their careers. So come to VR, and we're going to help you with your career choice. Good evening. Uh, it's great to be back up here again. Uh, my name is Jacob Oliva with the Division of Public Schools at the Department of Education. 
And uh, it's a privilege and an honor to be here with you this evening. I got to tell you, following Governor DeSantis is not an easy feat. He, he is somebody that gets you charged up and ready to, ready to get it uh, finished and across the, uh, accomplish all of our goals. One thing that I can promise you when we looked at what we were doing this last past year, about a year and a half, in making sure that we kept our schools open and kept an opportunity for our students to keep connected. One thing that I can tell you weighed heavy on uh, his mind and in his leadership, as well as Commissioner Corcoran, was our students with unique abilities who we knew could not get services that they have to have afforded to them in a remote or distance environment and that that may not be what's best for most of our students. Those decisions weighed very heavily on our agency when we talk about where have we been and where we are going is making sure that schools are open and that you have access to a high quality learning environment and that that can be done face to face because we know nothing replaces that teacher and that adult in the classroom. And I got to tell you, Florida has a lot to celebrate, a lot to celebrate because not only did we reopen our schools and stay connected with our students, but we are getting more of our students with disabilities to seek inclusion in general education with the supports they need and deserve at higher rates than almost any other state in the nation. And that is something that we are very, very proud of. The more we can do to include our students and make sure that they are graduating with the skills necessary to be successful in life, and hear about these wonderful examples that were shared today is what we're going to stand to achieve. I can tell you, uh, as somebody that's been the Chancellor of Education for the past couple of years, and I don't know if I've ever shared this, Lori, with, with you or the team or the families here, but when I began my teaching career, I was a classroom teacher before I went into administration and, and started working for the department. I went to school to be a special education teacher, and my very first teaching job was in a K-3 self-contained ESE classroom, and that is where I personally spent my entire teaching career. Now, I oversee a lot of different divisions and bureaus within our agency, and I'm not supposed to have favorites, but I can tell you, any time I get to meet with our Bureau of Exceptional Student Education, that is where I put my heart and soul and spend the most of my time, and many of them are here tonight, and I want them to stand and be recognized because they're the ones that are making it happen for the families throughout the state. And as Lori said, we will be here and stay as long as we need to to make sure your needs are being met. So thank you all for being here tonight. Appreciate you. Hello, good evening, uh, Governor DeSantis, Senator Galvano, members of the uh, Florida Legislature, volunteers, and all the members of the uh, uh, Family Cafe participants. Uh, thanks for inviting me tonight. My name is Dr. Robert Karch. Uh, I'm the uh, Deputy Secretary for Children's Medical Services, and I'm here representing the Florida Department of Health uh, this evening. So thanks for having me. It's a real honor. Uh, I'm new to the Department of Health. It's my first Family Cafe, and I love this conference. Uh, I had the honor of uh, presenting an overview of the Florida Department of Health earlier today, but the highlight of my afternoon was sitting down with the family resource specialists that support our Early Steps program. Uh, and uh, I've had the opportunity of meeting Marisol Rose, who's the parent statewide consultant uh, for the family resource specialists. Is, is Marisol here? Uh, this is a group that uh, really gives uh, each of these members have children who have been through the early steps process and know the ups and downs, the trials and tribulations, all of the barriers, and can inform our program based upon their lived experience. And I think that is an awesome program. Uh, it's one that I want to develop and participate in uh, and, and really get the feedback from parents with children with special health care needs uh, so that we can improve our programs. That is absolutely uh, vital, and I really appreciate everything that they do. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a pediatrician. I, I, prior to joining the Department of Health uh, a year ago, I practiced here at Nemours Children's Hospital in Orlando and as an uh, associate professor of pediatrics at UCF College of Medicine, uh, where I, I taught nutrition to the uh, medical students. That's my, my interest. Uh, since taking on my new role at the Department of Health, I've had the privilege 
of uh, developing and growing and improving all of our programs in the portfolio at Children's Medical Services, including the newborn screening program. Uh, I believe the last time that uh, 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 D uh, Director Paisley spoke to this conference two years ago, the Department of Health was just planning on introducing three new conditions, Pompe disease, mucopolysaccharidosis one, and spinal muscular atrophy. In 2020, the department successfully launched screening for these new conditions, uh, and that's no small undertaking. Uh, three new conditions. The newborn screening program now screens for 57 rare metabolic and genetic conditions with the hopes of early intervention to make a real impact on these children with these rare diseases uh, while there's an opportunity to have such a positive impact. The newborn screening hearing program uh, through the Early Hearing Detection Intervention Program is a vital program and our EDI goals are one, three, and six. Diagnosis, uh, a screening by one month of age, diagnosis with hearing loss by three months of age, and referral to our Early Steps Program by six months of age. And we're actively working uh, with our, our, our teams, our EDI Advisory Committee, to really improve that program and get these children the services uh, that they need in a timely fashion. We have our child protection teams uh, uh, that investigate uh, alleged child abuse, our sexual abuse treatment programs, uh, our child abuse death review committee, which looks at uh, the, uh, the causes of childhood fatalities and the, the, the top causes of child fatalities, the preventable child fatalities for those children referred to the child abuse hotline are sudden unexplained infant deaths, so sleep-related infant death, drowning, and inflicted trauma. And I'm really proud that in the last year we're taking uh, significant steps towards developing innovative programs to prevent sudden infant uh, uh, deaths due to sleep uh, and, and drowning. And I, I think you'll be hearing uh, a lot more about that in the coming year. Of course, uh, since the last uh, Family Cafe, uh, the uh, Children's Medical Services Managed Care Plan uh, has been launched, actually it launched on February 1st of 2019. Uh, this is a family-centered, uh, uh, comprehensive uh, plan, uh, health care plan, uh, providing health care coverage for children and youth with special health care needs. I know that many of you in the audience are familiar with the plan. Uh, we're very pleased, and, uh, but we want to hear from you. Uh, and uh, we want to hear if you have concerns, much like I heard today, uh, from the, the uh, family resource specialist with early steps, we do want to hear you. And I'm here after, and my, I'm, I'm always available to you uh, if you have concerns with the uh, CMS managed care plan. Many of you know about our Title V programming. Uh, our Title V priorities are uh, creating patient-centered family, uh, uh, patient-centered medical homes for children and youth with special health care needs. Uh, a transition program, ensuring that we have uh, uh, high quality transition services to adult care, starting at the age of 12, not starting at the age of 18 when the transition is happening, uh, but starting at the age of 12 and working with our adult providers to make sure uh, that there's a seamless transition to high quality care uh, for children and youth with special health care needs. And finally, expanding our, our network, our statewide network of mental health services uh, across the state. Uh, such an important uh, issue, and I really do want to applaud uh, Governor and First Lady DeSantis uh, for their commitment uh, to making Florida stronger through uh, a vital funding for mental health services. Uh, we're building on that vision by expanding these uh, mental health uh, hubs around the state, and we're very excited about that. Our medical foster care program medical foster care program, uh, we're interested in recruiting more medical foster care parents. It's a wonderful program for children with special health care needs. Uh, we need more medical foster care parents, so I think you're going to be hearing about our recruitment efforts over the coming months, uh, and we're excited about that. So, in, in summary, uh, uh, I'm excited. I love my job. Uh, I love these programs. They're so important. This family cafe is really a special uh, event, and I, I want to hear from you. Uh, as Lori mentioned before, uh, it is storm season. The Department of Health does manage the uh, special needs shelters, uh, so please take, a uh, take the time to 
sit down, come up with an emergency plan for your family, register with the special needs registry and know where your special needs shelter will be. Uh, we'll offer assistance if you need it, just reach out. I'm going to be here after, uh, uh, for a long time if you have questions about any of our programs, and you'll have my contact information. So thank you again for inviting me. Thank you. Good night. All right, Family Cafe is good to be back, ain't it? In person, that is good. I have Zoom fatigue. Lori, I am tired of a camera. So, but I know this is streaming. Please keep watching, I promise. So my name is John Finch. I am the director of the State of Florida's ABLE program. How many of you have heard of ABLE United? All right. Well, my work is done. Thank you all. Uh, but no. Fifteen years ago, families and parents just like you all in here said it was not fair for them to start saving for their child with some type of unique ability like it was for their typical child without negatively impacting their future. And so through the hard work of many tireless advocates, parents, individuals with disabilities, the idea of achieving a better life experience through the ABLE Act came to fruition. Five years ago, we sat in this room and we're about to launch Florida's ABLE program, ABLE United. It was exciting and nervous for the state to launch something that has never existed, that many people have called the most significant disability legislation to pass since the American with Disabilities Act. So what is the ABLE program? It allows families and individuals to start saving without jeopardizing their public benefits, SSI, Medicaid iBudget waiver. Since we have launched, over 6,200 families have started saving in ABLE United accounts here in Florida. Combined, those 6,200 individuals have saved over $45 million. That's people just like you. That's real money, right? To be able to achieve a better life experience, to purchase things like homes and vehicles, to put down payments on things they could never even dream of, but now is a reality through the ABLE program. So I'm humbled to be uh, serving at the state of Florida as the director of this program. I'm excited for what's going to come. Last year, we launched a prepaid debit card that allows people to shop anywhere Visa is accepted. So far, over $500,000 has been put on those cards and used across the state. We're excited for what the future is going to hold, expanding who can open these accounts on behalf of their loved ones, and then also allowing uh, additional individuals to serve in the capacity on those accounts. So I'm excited of where this program is going to go. We have a, a speaking event tomorrow. We have booths in the exhibit hall. So come by, say hi, and we'll answer any questions you have. But thank you. Good evening. I'm Barbara Palmer, director of the Agency for Persons with Disabilities. I love you all. Uh, you know, every single day I get up to serve you. And so do all of the people in our agency. I have done a lot of things in my life but I have never worked with a group of people that care so much about you. And I want you to see some of them right now. Would you all please stand up, people that work at the Agency for Persons with Disabilities right here. Give them a big round of applause. So I want to ask you, are you having fun? You can have even more fun, but the good thing about this and that your wonderful, wonderful leader here has done every single year is make sure that you have the opportunity to learn, to learn new things. That's what this thing is all about. It's about you going to sessions and learning. It's also about you going to sessions and teaching us. At least tomorrow at 1 o'clock, this is, this is an advertisement now, okay? Tomorrow at 1 o'clock, uh, we will be in this room Right? Isn't it in this room? In this room. And we're going to tell you about all the things that we've been working on. There have been so many things the legislature has done. But I first have to tell the legislators, I hope some of them are still here, 
Do you realize what the governor was saying and what the governor has done too? $95 million to take people off the waiting list. $95 million. That's the most that's ever been done, ever, for this agency. So we have a lot of things to do. We're going to talk to you tomorrow about how we're going to do that. We're going to talk to you tomorrow about iConnect, which is the, this is your client data management system where you're going to be able to find out all kinds of information. We've been working on it for three years, and so soon it will be available for you all to use as well. We're also going to talk about all the other things that we're doing and give you an opportunity to ask us questions. Because I know that probably every single person in this room has a personal question, has a question not only about what's going on with your life, but what's going on, what's the future for this agency, what's the future for you? So please come at 1 o'clock tomorrow so I can learn from you. Thank you. Good evening. How is everybody doing? My name is Robert Roy, and I'm with the uh, Department of Children and Families. I'm with the Adult Protective Services. And on behalf of Secretary Harris and our team at the Department of Children and Families, I am truly honored to be here with you tonight for the 23rd Annual Family Cafe. This is my first time here, and I'm impressed. <laughs> this is, I, I was talking to our uh, regional uh, APD, and they, I was telling them, this, this is very impressive. I like this. I actually sat into some presentations. Uh, I learned a couple things. <laughs> so it opened my eyes also. Um, and as the governor has said, that we're, we're all here for the same goal, and that is to ensure every citizen has the opportunity to excel and reach their full potential. Although the days, uh, although the days can sometimes prove challenging, it is the support from the caregivers and provider agencies that guides the daily life of our loved ones with unique abilities. Your commitment, support, and de dedication are unmatched. The department will continue to work collaboratively with you and the agency, uh, agency for Persons with Disability to develop solutions to ensure service needs are met. As we continue our work together uh, to integrate of not only the department's internal programs, but also integration across our partner agencies with the customers you will continue, you will continue to be our main focus. And we are, we're doing that right now, um, just to guys let you know, with our APD in our region and statewide, we are collaborating with APD, we're working together with cases, we're working together to find services, we're trying to integrate with uh, uh, substance abuse um, to get uh, those and mental health to get all the services going in the same direction, working with access um, and all the programs working together instead of having someone say, oh, that's that program's job, that's this program's job. So whether you enter the department's door through adult services, economic self-sufficiency, or substance abuse and mental health pr uh, program, you will be served holistically with a customer-centered uh, approach. The department's hope is that you will enjoy this year's event, which is awesome, I'll, I'll just tell you that, and take advantage of the fellowship it offers and the opportunities to learn about the available resources and develop new and lasting relationships. And I truly thank you. It is an honor for me to be here um, and to come and just, just watch the whole program uh, and, and the event unfold. Thank you. One more round of applause for the whole uh, seated audience up, uh, group up here. So when you all were spoken, speaking, my Lord, I found out a little secret. Someone today is having a birthday. Is it your birthday, sir? Your birthday's in May? Then never mind. They were texting me saying, "Whose birthday is it?" Yeah. Anybody have a birthday today? No. All right. I was gonna sing, and I don't do it on key, but you know. Okay. We're gonna stick around. Ask, answer any of your questions.
We hope that you uh, will take this opportunity, it doesn't come around often, to share with them what's working, what's not working. Um, give them thanks, give them heck, let them know, uh, and help to make the service delivery system uh, become better for you and your family and for all individuals with disabilities. So I want to thank you all for attending. We'll see each other tomorrow morning here at 9 a.m. for our, our keynote speaker, Mickey Rowe. Okay, we're so quiet. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Thank you.